With the CAA releasing their new visual line of sight rule, the subject has become something of a hot topic in the UK. Today, we're going to break down how you can still fly your drone further away than the CAA guidance tells us without falling foul of the law. One second before we start this video, as per the title, this is the Geeksvana Venus Survival Guide. Guide being the operative words. This video is purely my opinion and interpretation of the law and the rules. It is practical advice on how to adopt the rules and law on VLOS specifically into your daily drone flights as a hobbyist in the open category. Always make sure you check for yourself anything some dude on YouTube tells you, especially when it can end up with you being in legal trouble. If the bleep hits the fan, shall we say, you can be assured that no YouTuber will be stood next to you in court defending you, nor will the court really care if they were. The following is based on my experience and knowledge and is pretty much how I approach VLOS when it comes to my own drone flight. This video is not something to help you fly your drone beyond visual line of sight, so if you're looking for some fantasy loophole which will allow you to fly your Mini 3-4 miles away, this isn't the video. During this video, I will talk through when the CAA AMC guidelines are, in my opinion, a good idea, and when and how I fly beyond them, but feel confident that I'm not breaking any law, nor would I face prosecution for flying out of line of sight. There are also a couple of tips on how to modify your drone to increase the VLOS even under the CAA guidelines. As much of this video is about discussing how I fly my drone, my advice on VLOS, it would be very interesting for me to hear from you in the comments below about how you handle VLOS. Any tips of your own? Share them with the community. Also, if you're new here and want more drone content, subscribe. If you're one of my regular viewers, could you do me the favor of continuing to hit the like button nice and early? It actually has a pretty big impact and I thank you for doing it. So first up, let us just remind ourselves what the CAA acceptable means of compliance actually says in terms of VLOS. It gives us the following definition based on their interpretation of Article 2.7. Definition of visual line of sight operation, unaided visual contact. Unaided in this context means without the use of any other equipment such as binoculars, telescopes, cameras or any other such equipment. This does not include corrective lenses, which may be worn. The next part of the definition is the bit which has got us all a bit excited recently. Definition of visual line of sight operation, control the flight path. In order to control the visual flight path of the UA, it must be kept within a suitable distance of the remote pilot, such that they can monitor the aircraft's position, orientation, there's that word, and the surrounding airspace at all times. Now, in our recent interview series with the CAA, we got a deep dive in terms of their interpretation of that definition, and they did indeed confirm that you need to see the orientation of the aircraft, and they confirmed that probably means keeping a drone like the Mini 3 Pro within about 90 to 100 meters of your position. So who do I think should follow the AMC guidance that we just ran through? Well, according to the CAA, it should be anyone who wishes to be flying under the presumption that you're flying legally. I would think of it as a bubble that sits comfortably within the legislation. It means that the CAA feel your flight is certainly legal, but more on that in a second. In terms of who I personally think should fly within the ANC and keep their drone close enough to tell the orientation, well, I would say it is a good idea for new flyers to follow this. So if you are the buyer who just grabbed their first ever camera drone and have only a few hours flying experience, I would personally say it's a good idea to follow this guidance and keep your drone nice and close. It will help to build your confidence and should an incident occur which is outside of your control and trust me, they do happen more than you might expect, then you have the confidence that your flight was presumed to be legal by the CAA in terms of visual line of sight at least. Who else? Well, my personal advice would be for anyone who is flying within a built-up area which they are unfamiliar with. It would be a good idea to follow this guidance until you build confidence in the location. This will keep the drone a little closer and easier to see, control and recall if required. It will help you in terms of understanding the location, so how people are moving around, the obstacles and issues you might face. And keeping in mind that not everybody flies drones with a reliable DJI transmission system, it will help in case there are any interference with the signal between your drone and the controller. This interference can, of course, be more likely in an urban setting. Essentially, what I'm saying here is that you are more likely to have issues with your drone in a new urban area, so keep your drone within the AMC and orientation might actually be useful 
at least initially. Now, before we move on to how I fly beyond this guidance from the CAA and do so, in my opinion, perfectly legally, let us talk for a moment about how you can increase the visual conspicuity of your drone and make it easier to spot in the sky, especially if you're flying to the CAA AMC guidance and the orientation of the drone is even more important to you. As we discover from the CAA interviews, this cannot be achieved through lights or by moving your drone through the control sticks to make the drone twitch, etc. There is also the issue here of weight. If you're flying a sub 250 gram drone, then it is likely every gram is vital to keep you under that magic weight. One way I have found, which is also cheap and easily reversible if you want to sell the drone, is to use high visibility tape to mark certain sides of your drone, and then you can place the tape along the body and arms using different colors for the back and one of the sides. This tape enhances the view you have of the drone in the sky without any adding any real weight. So you only really need to put tape on the back and on one of the sides as this is enough to form an easy to remember guide of orientation. If you see two colors, one color or no color, then it is obvious which way the drone is facing. So there is an easy and affordable way to mark your drone and make following the AMC even easier. Make sure you use tape designed specifically to be reflective and designed to work in outdoor conditions, so it needs to be waterproof. You do not want to apply tape that is simply going to start peeling off. The last thing you want is tape coming off during a flight and getting into the props, etc. So make sure the tape is secure each and every flight and that it is of a decent quality. As I mentioned before, I do not personally fly to the AMC guidance. Instead, I follow what is my own reasonable interpretation of the implementing regulations. You see, what we have with the CAA New Venus rule is their interpretation of how every drone flyer can confidently fly within the law. This has to encompass all types of flyer with all levels of experience, which is why perhaps it falls down a little in terms of more experienced and knowledgeable drone pilots. So when I say I fly to the legislation stroke regulation, what do I actually mean? Okay, you need to sit down for this bit. I'm going to get a little bit geeky with this topic for the next couple of minutes, but I promise you it is worth it. If you remember, when I explained the CAA definition of VLOS, it mentioned Article 2.7. This is the section of the legislation, the law, which discusses visual line of sight. The CAA AMC is their definition of VLOS based on that law. The CAA, remember, are there to regulate the airspace and interpret the law into a set of rules for us all to follow. But in practical terms, what does that mean? What's the difference? Here's a simple way to explain it. The law, Article 27 of the Commission Implementing Regulation EU 2019 947, which is a definition of visual line of sight and something you would be prosecuted under. This is the legislation that a police officer would refer to when assessing the legality of your flight. You will not, in my opinion, be prosecuted directly for flying outside of the new CAA AMC guide, where that would really come in, in my view, is when a court is looking for guidance from the CAA about your flight, or even be something which you include in your own defence to demonstrate that you were flying legally. So when forming my own interpretation of visual line of sight and how to fly within the law, remembering that I'm a pretty highly experienced drone pilot with many hours flying time on a range of drones, including experience in ATI mode with larger drones, holding an A2CFC and GVC certificates, I do not personally rely on the protection of the CAA AMC. Instead, I take what I feel is a reasonable view a judge might take should the worst case scenario happen and I need to defend my flight in court. This doesn't mean I can fly my drone two miles away and just claim that a reasonable person would think that's okay. That isn't what this means at all. It means what is a reasonable application of the law. Remember that nowhere in law does it state a hard number for how far a certain size drone can actually fly. Next, I want to bring up the CAA guidance, their rule which forms part of the drone code alongside the definition from the legislation itself. Then I'll explain how I decide on how far I fly my drone away from my position. On the left we have the CAA AMC and on the right we have the definition from legislation from which the CAA guidance is derived from. The legislation states visual line of sight operation VLOS means a type of operation in which the remote pilot is able to maintain continuous unaided visual contact with the unmanned aircraft allowing the remote pilot to control the flight of the path of their unmanned aircraft in relation to other aircraft, people and obstacles for the purpose of avoiding collisions. So as you can see within the law itself, there isn't a blanket figure or in fact mention of the orientation. 
So moving on now to my own interpretation of visual line of sight and how I make efforts to stay within the law. My first bit of advice would be to stop thinking of VLOS as a specific distance for your drone and start to think of VLOS as a variable which is impacted by many factors during the flight of the drone and it could change from flight to flight. These include things like weather, everything from clouds, fog and more can impact VLOS. Even if it is as simple as your grey drone creating less contrast with a cloudy sky. Location. Different locations would, I argue, require different approaches to VLOS. If you're flying over green fields with the odd tree and counter dodge, then your drone is going to be more obvious in the sky and there's going to be less on the ground to conflict with. Fly in a busy town centre and a drone being flown at the same distance as it was within a field might be obscured by background buildings or harder to spot in a busier environment. You will also have more ground hazards to keep an eye out for and a changing environment in terms of people, etc. You, how are you feeling that day? Tired? Has it been a long week? Just as we see our performance as a driver impacted by the time of day, weather and conditions and how we're feeling, the same is true with your drone flight. Your ability to maintain control at further distances is directly impacted by these factors. Remember, the legislation states that the purpose of VLOS is to avoid collisions. If you're tired and slow to react, then you need to keep the drone closer to allow for you to spot uh, issues more easily. Perhaps don't even fly, in fact. The drone. VLOS, in my opinion, is impacted by the quality, condition and reliability of the drone itself. If I'm flying a cheap or substandard drone which doesn't offer much in reliability or data terms, then I would certainly fly closer and to the CAA AMC. Hopefully, you can see what I mean now when I talk about not seeing VLOS as a distance thing entirely. The purpose of the law is avoiding collisions, which includes on the ground if your drone needs to land suddenly. So there are other factors than just the distance the drone is away from you, which will impact this. In real terms, in practice, what does this actually look like? Well, for me, and again, I'm talking about my own flights here and not providing legal advice whatsoever. But as long as I'm able to maintain good visual line of sight of my drone and I can safely take action to avoid any kind of collision, be that on the ground or in the air, that I am following the VLOS law. If it comes to something going wrong and I end up in court, I realise that I cannot fall back on the drone code or the CAA AMC as my defence and would need to justify my actions based on the law alone. Putting that personal policy into how far I fly my drone, well, I ensure that I can see any aircraft which are coming into the airspace around my drone. I make sure that I have enough information about the ground hazards to allow me to make an emergency landing or land to avoid an aircraft without causing a collision on the ground as well. This is not, however, covered simply from the camera feed of my drone. In my opinion, gauging hazards both in the air and on the ground purely by the camera feed is not VLOS. What about orientation? I think this is important because it means I have full control of my drone. I know where it is in the sky. However, my personal interpretation is that as long as I can see the drone orientation through a number of physical factors, then I believe I comply with the law. This includes moving the control sticks to check orientation and the camera view and telemetry being fed back to me through the controller screen. If I'm able in terms of not adding weight and pushing a drone into a different class, I would also add strobe lights to that recipe. My knowledge of the orientation of the drone is also informed by my short-term memory. Unless something dramatic has happened, a very small amount of credence is given to the fact that I know which way I was flying the last time I looked down from the drone. Now this sits outside of the CAA rule explained in the AMC, so why do I think it's okay? Well, for me, I feel it is reasonable to expect that not all of these physical and technological aids will fail completely and mean I lose VLOS. In fact, I would argue that if all of these aids were to fail and I could not confirm my orientation through them, including having no control through the sticks, then the drone is a flyaway and out of control. So I have far bigger issues, far more issues than orientation to consider. I also feel that it is reasonable to base my VLOS on these aids as I feel it is reasonable to assume that most of these aids will work reliably and consistently. That goes back to the point I made earlier about the quality of drone, of course, and 
ensuring you maintain your drone properly to ensure it is airworthy at all times. Another real-world practical tip I would give on this is what happens when you look up from your controller. Are you able to find your drone clearly in the sky pretty instantly, or do you need to search for a while and move it around to spot the dot or flashing light? If that happens to me, I would say that that would mean I no longer have visual line of sight of the drone as described in the law itself. This is a great point to emphasize what I was saying before about how things like the weather impact VLOS. How easily your drone is to spot in the sky is directly impacted by so many factors. So don't be surprised if one day you can fly your drone 30% further than another more cloudy day perhaps. Now to fly outside the CAA guidance, I take extra steps to ensure I can back up my actions should it ever be needed. This includes the following steps. A pre-flight check. I check my drone carefully for defects and damage and ensure it is updated and has a battery with full charge that hasn't been through too many cycles. A risk assessment. Personally, I do not bust out a physical pen or paper or a screen to carry out an actual risk assessment for each and every hobby flight, but I do carry one out mentally. This includes checking the airspace on drone assist, the weather and assessing the location on the day of the flight to try and see where things might go wrong and then take steps to avoid that issue. As we're talking about VLOS today, this might include something like a busy town center or a cloudy sky, meaning I'm going to keep my drone a little closer that day. Take a screenshot of the data on drone assist and of UAV forecast. I also take a few shots of my takeoff position and the area I'm flying. It stops debates after the event, should they happen. So there you have my advice on when following the CAA AMC or the base law might be appropriate. As you've heard in this video, there hasn't been any discussion of flying your drone genuinely out of line of sight. There is nothing in law to support this kind of flight. And the reason I do not support it personally or through my work here on Geeks Fun is because I do not think it is safe. And it will be one of the activities that will see us further restricted in the hobby. You could argue one reason the CAA VLOS compliance is so tight is because they have to be clear that flying beyond visual line of sight is something which should absolutely not be happening in the hobby. If we want that to change, we need to engage with things like consultations. Again, I would be really interested to hear in the comments what you think and what steps you put into place to achieve the best results. So do comment below. This is an interesting topic because it isn't as straightforward as, say, speeding in a car, which has at least a reference figure. Drive over the posted speed limit and you know you're going to risk a ticket. With VLOS, we have to take a lot more judgment calls. And remember, those calls could be tested in court one day. That's it for the Geeks Vana VLOS Survival Guide. Sean out.